page turners are exciting books, the kind you don't want to put down, the kind you would stay up late reading. Books are exciting when we can find ourselves in the story and imagine being part of the adventure. This month, we're going to look at some page turning stories of the Bible. Each of these stories has something valuable to teach us about our patient and powerful God who prepares us to fight temptation and celebrates us, the heroes, in our own real life adventures. Let's turn the page and get started. There are many stories where a hero comes across a magical plant that has special properties. Can you imagine if you were that hero? If you were to plant some seeds, what would you want that seed to grow into? A tree with chocolate bark, a trampoline, a water slide, a gummy bear bush, whatever. Now today we are going to be planting our own seeds and all we need is our plastic bag and some paper towel. And we are going to pretend that it will grow into whatever we just imagined right now. Now, personally, I would like to see a plant that grows and marches into my house and does the dishes every night because I don't really love doing the dishes. So, here it goes. Dishwasher plant coming right up. All right, I'm ready. Hurry up and grow. Come on, let's do this thing. Everyone's waiting, come on, plant. Hey, how come my dishwasher plant didn't grow yet? Ugh, do I have to be patient? Man, waiting is no fun, but sometimes really good things are worth waiting for. Now let's all plant our seeds. And just so you know, it's possible that I mixed up the pizza tree seeds with like sunflower seeds. So don't be too disappointed if that's what comes out. We'll just have to wait and find out. Hi guys, I'm so excited to tell you something. Woo. So, forgot what I was going to say. Oh man, waiting is so hard, isn't it? Raise your hand if you don't like waiting. I totally get it. Have you ever felt like giving up on something or someone that you've been really had to be patient with? It's time to jump into the pages of the most epic book ever, the Bible. Let's read today's Bible story together, then we'll try to reimagine it and understand it better. This is the parable of the barren fig tree. Then Jesus told this story. A man planted a fig tree in his garden and came again and again to see if there was any fruit on it. But he was always disappointed. Finally, he said to his gardener, I've waited three years and there hasn't been a single fig. Cut it down. It's just taking up space in the garden. The gardener answered, sir, Give it one more chance. Leave it another year and I'll give it special attention and plenty of fertilizer. If we get figs next year, fine. If not, then we can cut it down. Now, this is kind of a weird story. So let's reimagine this story in a different way. There once was a girl with a very special and unique ability. She could talk to trees. Because of this ability, she was wonderful at managing vineyards and orchards because she could actually talk to the trees into producing the biggest, most delicious fruits and figs. A girl was hired by a man to manage his vineyard. And there was one particular tree that was her favorite. It was a fig tree that the girl just knew could produce the most wonderful figs that anyone had ever tasted. But there was a problem. The tree had never produced a single one. No matter what she said to the tree, it just wouldn't produce any figs. One day, the man who owned the vineyard said to the girl, cut 
down that fig tree. It's wasting my soil. But the girl patiently replied, sir, it just needs more time. I'll give it extra special care for another year. And if it doesn't produce fruit, then I will cut it down as you say. The man agreed and the girl went out to talk to her favorite fig tree again. Imagine that this fig tree could feel. How do you think it would feel about the girl knowing how patient she is with the tree? The story Jesus told and the one we just reimagined together just now reminds us that sometimes we're like the fig tree. Even though all of us are able to grow, learn, and do things the way God wants us to, sometimes we don't. Sometimes it takes us a while to catch on to what Jesus taught us. And it takes us a while to be kind. We even forget to share. But just like the girl was patient with the tree, Jesus is patient with us. He gives us many chances to learn and to do the things we learn about in the Bible. Okay, I am looking for the most comfortable couch so we can discover our big idea together. Now, this is Pastor Graham's office, but he's not here right now. But this couch is so cool. I love the color and let's see. Oh, it's even more comfortable than it looks. All right, everyone. In our favorite stories, the authors can sometimes fast forward right through the time that it takes for them to learn how to become heroes, to work on their skills, to make mistakes, and learn from their mistakes before they even reach their potential. All they need to do is say five years later and bam, just like that, our heroes are suddenly wiser and stronger than they were just a few pages ago. But life isn't like that. Once a hero becomes great, we usually love them for ability to act fast, not to take their time. That's why we hardly think about patience as being a superpower, but it is. Of all of God's superpowers, this might be the greatest. God is willing to wait for as long as it takes for us to reach our own potential. And since God gave us that potential, there's no question that it's there inside of us waiting for us to discover it. Now, let's turn the page and find out what our big idea is for today. Oh, I see it. Here it is. Today's big idea is God is patient while we grow. Now, let's say that one more time together. God is patient while we grow. This sure is a comfy couch. chicken nuggets it's me coral welcome to grow tv welcome to grow tv hosted by coral where we have fun with our friends talk about jesus and go over everything the bible has to offer now once again welcome to grow tv well, look who decided to show up. It's about time. You know, I've been waiting for you since last week. Seriously, y'all did the big idea last week and just had it out. Not me though. I was so excited to dive into another episode. I haven't slept. No, seriously, come on, let's go. Let's go. Why isn't it working? Come on, work Bible, work. What in the world? What's happening? Ah, I'm so frustrated. I grab the Bible, I open it, I begin to read, and then I get sucked into the story. Oh, why is it not happening? Every other time it works. Oh, I got it. Maybe there's a phrase I have to say for it to work the third time. Let's try it. Skiddily do, skiddily dang. Take me inside this Bible story thing. Huh, maybe there's a type of dance I have to do. <laughs> No, that ain't working either. Come on, what's taking so long? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take three long, deep breaths, then I'm gonna open the Bible and slowly start reading. Then, and hopefully then, I'll be able to be back in the story like last time. Here we go. Wow, my 
feels good to be back. Wonder what made the dip. Grace! Carl, how are you, buddy? I'm great, now. Why do you say that? Well, you wouldn't believe how long it took for me to get back here. Really? Really? I mean, I've been waiting around here since last week, restless. Well, then I tried to hurry up and get back once my friend showed up, but it took a few tries. Hmm. Well, what worked? Well, I had to take a few deep breaths, take my time. I guess I had to be a little, hmm, what's the word? Patient? Yes, patient. How'd you know that? Well, Carl, I think patience is the reason we are here today. Really? Why's that? You see that tree behind you? Sure I do. Well, that tree is our focus for today's story. Hold up, you're telling me that tree is what we're talking about today? A tree? Some weird little cherry tree is what I'm here for? What kind of story is this? I don't have more important things to do than talk about a tree, okay? Carl, first off, you need to calm down. Deep breaths, okay? <sighs> Feel better? Yeah. Okay, secondly, it's not a cherry tree, it's a fig tree. And well, the story you opened up to, Carl, in Luke chapter 13, it's not a very common story. But don't let that fool you. It's very important. All right, I'm listening. You see, Jesus was telling us a parable. It was about a man who owned a vineyard, which is land with fruit plants and trees on it. Okay, I'm following you. So the man went to check and see if there was any fruit on the tree, and guess what? The tree was actually an alien robot that sent to destroy all other vegetables. No, the man saw it had no fruit, and he got kind of frustrated. So he turned to the person in charge of taking care of the trees and said, For three years now I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Whoa! He was going to cut them down because they didn't have fruit? Yep. But the person looked back at the owner of the vineyard and said to wait one more year. Wait, really? I hate waiting. We know, Carl. But the person said they would take extra care of the tree in the next year, and then they would see if it bore fruit. If it did, then great. But if the tree didn't bear fruit, then they would cut it down. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Why wait a whole year? Well, if it's a bad tree, I say, cut it down. Well, you have a point. But can I ask you a question, Carl? Fine, but make it quick. I've always wanted to cut down a tree. Do you ever make mistakes? Uh, yeah. Who doesn't? <laughs> Here's another question. If God sees you messing up and making mistakes, would you want God to be patient with you? Uh, yeah. I would hope so. Well, that's exactly what's happening here with the fig tree. Huh? Yeah. You see, this was just a story Jesus was telling. A parable. And it was a way of teaching us to show how patient God is with us. So in this case, we're the tree? Exactly. And just like trees, we were created with a purpose. And that purpose is... Uh, leaf? People alone? No, to bear fruit. Once we accept and choose to live for Jesus, God's love will automatically start flowing through us. And that's what bearing fruit is. Oh, that makes sense. Kind of like when trees get sunlight and water, they can grow and bear fruit. But fruit don't grow on trees right away. So I guess Jesus' story is telling us that even when we're not bearing fruit, God waits for us and gives us time to keep trying? Exactly. But we could never do it without God's help. We have to remember that. Just like that gardener was going to take care of the tree and give it time to grow, God is patient with us too. Wow. I never thought that being compared to a tree would be a good thing. What's up, tree? Well, hello there. And it's so good to see your faces today. Now, today's big idea is God is patient while we grow. Now, I thought it would be fun to do the big idea in a fun but patient way, okay? So instead of counting down from three, let's practice patience by starting from, mm, I don't know, at 50, okay? Here we go. 50, 49, 48, 47, 46, 33, 32, 31, 15, 14, 13, 12, 
three, two, one. God is patient while we grow. Yay! Whew. All right, great job, kids. And thanks for being so patient. Now, I hope to see every single one of you next week on our next episode of Grow TV. Okay, bye, kids. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Grow TV. We all struggle with patience. I know I do. It's so hard to wait. But God is amazing at being patient. Being patient as we grow doesn't only mean watching and waiting. It means making sure we have room to grow. Imagine going through an incredibly difficult life-sized maze. We may stumble and struggle to find our way back. We don't know where to go next. Sometimes we have to backtrack. It takes a lot longer to get through it than what we meant for it to. Growing and facing new things can sometimes feel like that, and that's okay. When we come to the place where the struggle and the confusion just get to be too much, God will always be there. God doesn't give up on us when we mess up, and it takes a long time to find our way because God is so patient while we grow. Ever since I was a little girl, I've always wanted to be a mom. And you know what? God had a plan for me to be a mom, but it took me a little bit longer than most people to become a mom. I had to wait and wait, and sometimes we don't like waiting. Think of some of your favorite stories. If every single story ended with the hero quickly getting to the ending, would the stories be boring? Reading about their struggles and challenges is what makes the story so good and what makes the endings more satisfying when they win. See, God is patient while we grow. So we need to learn to be patient with ourselves and with others too. What is one way you can be patient with yourself? How can you be more patient with your family, with friends, or even with complete strangers? Having patience is one of the best ways we can show how thankful we are that God has so much patience with us. Okay, let's imagine that we are in an enchanted forest and we come across these tiny little seeds and you find out from the woodland creatures who talk of course that the only way we can make these little tiny seeds grow into a tree is through a spell oh, no no not that kind of a spell that's not it it's by spelling the right words from oh what a coincidence our memory verse 2 Thessalonians 3, double dot 3. Let's see if we can help these seeds grow into an enchanted tree. You ready? Okay. But the Lord. Lord. Do you know how to spell that word? L-O-R-D. Great job. <gasps> but the Lord is faithful faithful mm. f a i t h f u l faithful but the lord is faithful but the lord is faithful and he will strengthen you. Oof, strengthen, that's a big word. Strength, S-T-R-E-N-G-T, again, T-H-E-N. But the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you. and protect you, protect, P-R-O-T-E-C-T, -E from the 
evil one. E V I L. Second Thessalonians three verse three. Woo. <sighs> nice tree. Oh, guys, I don't know about you, but I love reading books with pages, but also books with screens like my device here. I can read different ebooks. That's pretty amazing. Now, we are going to close our time in prayer today, and you might notice I have some of my cool plants around me. Now, I didn't have patience to wait for these plants to grow this big and beautiful. They're actually just fake plants that I bought, but I love having different plants around me. Now let's close our time in prayer. Close your eyes and put your hands together. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for being patient with us. We are so grateful that like a good gardener, you prepare and work the soil around us to make sure that we can grow strong. Even when we make mistakes, you don't give up on us. Help us to be like you and to grow in our patience with ourselves and with others. In Jesus' name we say, amen. I'm going to dive back into my book. We'll see you next week, everyone.